Hello everyone, this is Juan from Salmonella Place and today I'm going to do a tutorial, a biology tutorial, on northern blotting. I've done one in the past where I talked about southern blotting and due to a lot of requests from you I decided to do one where I'm going to discuss the details on northern blotting. And as the name indicates, southern blotting and northern blotting, they have similar functions. But while you use southern blotting to detect a specific DNA molecule within a mixture of other DNA molecules, then you would use northern blotting to detect RNA molecule or a certain or a few RNA molecules in a mixture of other RNA molecules. And this simplified, I would show you here a test tube just to illustrate what I'm talking about, containing a mixture of RNA molecules, these green and yellow structures that you have here in this aqueous solution, let's say. Now what you see here is that imagine that I want to detect, because I cannot visualize, I cannot see this clear in a lab setting, I cannot see this clear, these RNA molecules, so I need to find a way to actually visualize and to separate a certain RNA molecule. So say I want this yellow one that you see here, and what I would do then is use northern blotting to separate it, and have here my beautiful RNA molecule of choice. Now, keep in mind that northern blotting follows a similar protocol to southern blotting, but what it does, it uses other methods as well that we use in biology in general, and these methods are electrophoresis. And electrophoresis because you need a way to separate the molecules, the RNA molecules by size mainly, then the second thing that you're going to be doing is blotting. And blotting, we're going to see in detail, but this is basically when you transfer molecules from one membrane to another. And we're going to see why and how it's done. Now, another method that is used within northern blotting, and this is probing, or it is done through hybridization. And probing is basically when you want to find this molecule here, this yellow molecule, you have to find a way to label it, either a, through a radioactive or fluorescent label. And the way you would do so then is through hybridization, but we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail. Now let's briefly discuss or have an overview of the six steps of the northern blotting. The first one is RNA isolation, where you're going to isolate a certain RNA mixture, and then what you're going to do on the second step is to separate those molecules by size using gel electrophoresis. And as the name indicates, during gel electrophoresis, you're going to have a gel containing the RNA molecules. And what you're going to do on the third step is to transfer those molecules from the gel to an appropriate membrane, hence the name blotting. Blotting means to transfer. So you're going to transfer those RNA molecules from the gel to a membrane. So on the fourth step, you're going to be able to hybridize those RNA molecules with a labeled probe. So we can then, on the last step, visualize the RNA fragment, that specific RNA fragment that you're trying to target here using northern blotting. Now on the fifth step, it's a simple thing. You're just going to wash off the excess probes. And on the sixth and last step, it's what I just talked about, visualizing. So we need to actually see with a naked eye where the RNA molecules that you're trying to target using northern blotting are. Now I'm clearing this out so I can move on and talk about the RNA isolation, which is the very first step. Just going to quickly say that in order to study an RNA mixture, you need to extract them from cells of your choice. So you will isolate RNA molecules from cells. And in most cases, we study mRNA or messaging RNA molecules using northern blotting. 
once we extract the RNA mixture from those cells that we talked about on the previous slide, the next step will then be to separate the RNA molecules using gel electrophoresis. Now, the specific type, I'm going to write here that this is the second step, and that the specific type of gel electrophoresis that we use to separate RNA molecules is known as formaldehyde agarose gel electrophoresis. Now, what I have here is a very simple, very, very simple illustration, but will be enough for you to understand how this works, how northern blotting works. So we have here a simple gel, and the first thing that I'm going to do then is to pipette here the mixture containing all those RNA molecules. And then after that, what I'm going to do is to run a current, hence gel electrophoresis. So I'm running a current going from a negative charge all the way down to a positive charge. And why do I do that? Because if you remember well from basic knowledge on RNA, the RNA backbone is comprised of lots of phosphates. So for that matter, the total charge on an RNA molecule would be then considered to be as negative. And for, for that reason, you need to run a current going from a, pause, a negative charge all the way to a positive charge. That way, the molecules will migrate from this area here all the way down. And keep in mind that this is done horizontally, it's not done vertically, but I have shown here vertically so you can have a clearer idea how this works. Now, the once we run the current, what we're going to see is that the molecules are going to separate from one another by size. And I'm going to add here that the gel electrophoresis is able to separate the molecules by size. So you're going to be able to see these bands being formed. Not clearly see on a naked eye, but they're going to be formed, and each band corresponds to one RNA molecule. And as I mentioned, they're separated by size, so the molecules are found behind or closer to this area here. They're usually the large RNA molecules because they migrate slower. It's hard for them, it's a little bit harder for them to go through the gel matrix. For that matter, they're usually left behind. Meanwhile, the smallest one or the smallest RNA molecules are a little bit more agile, let's say, through the gel ma matrix, and they're able to travel a little bit further away from the large molecules. Now, at this point, we don't know exactly where our target RNA molecule is, the one that we really want to find out using northern blotting. But we just know that the molecules are now se separated from one another thanks to agarose gel electrophoresis. Now, just a quick word on why we need to use formaldehyde on this type of gel electrophoresis. If we look here at the RNA molecules that we are separating, they're usually single-stranded, as you know from previous knowledge on RNA molecules, and they have these self-complementary regions that are binding with one another. So we need to separate or to break these bonds between these self-complementary regions that form this self-loop structure that are well known from RNA structures or RNA molecules. And the way we're going to do so is by using formaldehyde. So formaldehyde is able to break those bonds and to denature the RNA molecule. And it will look something like this. So a denatured RNA molecule, which then will allow us to go on to the next step and add a probe or, a, or hybridize with a probe then to be able to visualize this RNA molecule. Now, after separating the RNA molecules using gel electrophoresis, it's time to move on to the third step, which is known as blotting. And during blotting, as the name indicates, you're transferring, and you're going to be transferring the 
the RNA molecules that you find on the gel from the gel electrophoresis to a nitrocellulose membrane. And the way you do so is by using a similar setting as you see here. This is not a hamburger, trust me. This is the a similar setting that what you would find in a lab. Now what you have here, this bluish color liquid representing a liquid, this is a salt solution. And then you would place here in this container, the first thing on um, this stack is a sponge. Then on top of the sponge you would place the, the gel containing the bands which then contain the molecules, the RNA molecules. And this is how it should look like the bands containing these molecules. And then on top of this gel, you would place then the nitrocellulose membrane where you want these bands to be transferred to. Now you can usually use suction to allow this transfer to happen, or you can just apply like you see here weight. And the way you do so is you place some paper towels, as you can see here, and then on top of the, pa the paper towels, you would place an actual weight to help this happen. And then simply what this will do is allow these bands here, or these molecules, to then transfer here to this nitrocellulose membrane. Once you're done transferring the RNA molecules from the gel to the nitrocellulose membrane, then it's time to do the fourth step on northern blotting, and this is going to be then hybridization with a label probe. And how do you do this, and why do you have to go through this? Well, say that you're left here with this nitrocellulose membrane containing all these bends, and this example that I'm giving to you is four bends. And each band contains, contains one type of RNA molecules. And we're trying to figure out which band contains the RNA molecules that we're looking for, that we're trying to detect, and then we can study them. Now, then you have to hybridize them with a label probe. Now, how do you do that? For example, you have here an RNA molecule. This is the RNA molecule that you're looking for in one of these bands, and it has a certain sequence that you know. And for that reason, you can figure out and choose a probe, a label probe, or a molecule that has a similar sequence to the RNA molecule that you're looking for. Usually, it's a cDNA molecule. And this cDNA molecule is then able to bind to this RNA molecule once you treat this nitrocellulose membrane with a solution full of probes, of labeled probes, of labeled cDNA probes. And these cDNA probes then have here either a radioactive label or a fluorescent dye, depending on which protocol you're trying to follow. Now, once you do that, the fifth step would be to then wash off the excess. So you need to wash off the excess amount of probes because you don't need them to interfere with your sixth step, which is going to be then visualization, or this is the actual last step. Now, the way you do so is through autoradiography. I'm going to spell here. So this is through autoradiography. And this then allows us to find out exactly in these four bands where are our RNA molecules that we're trying to detect from the beginning, from that mixture, and say that then through autoradiography, I'm going to be able to say that these molecules are found in this third band here. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website. And also, if you would like to spice up your scientific presentations, visit Summersalt1824 and discover their amazing and easy-to-use illustrations library.